Hi, my name's Shane Curtis, and this is my grappling seminar. <laughs> Last one for the wall, 
easier for easier, a bit faster. So we all know what single leg X is, actually Brahmi now. So I want you to get your partner to stand in your armpits. And we're just going to rep out this position a few times, just good for your abs and your leg blocks. So we're getting to the exact same position here. Opposite foot under the bum, other foot on the outside of the hip. Now I don't want to see anyone going up this because that's too low and you can just push my legs off if you run away if you want to. Yeah, exactly. So I want us to keep our hips up dead high. And you see, I really raised my hips up like that. And from now, we can sweep him, we can control him. It's a lot harder for him to pull his leg out, it's a lot harder for him to move. So I'm just going to keep switching positions like this, guys. And every time, I want you to feel that clamp as well. So if it's not tight enough, you can push it off. So if you just do this, guys, do maybe 10 inch and switch. And I'll just come around and make sure we've got it spot on. There are guys. So all we're looking to do is get through. Now, what I've seen, I've seen a lot of people do, I don't know why, they'll grip like this, they'll grip like this, they'll probably grip like this. I've seen so many people grip wrong. There's probably no right way to do it, but i found that if I just get like a guillotine grip, it seems to be the strongest grip for me. I'm not using my thumb either, because what you'll find is, if you grip round like this, as you can see, it's easier to strip the grip. If I hook round, my knuckles come a lot further round and there's more of a hook. Okay? So rather than, it's just kind of the same difference between that and that. Okay? So make sure that you're hooking. Alright? So, back to where we were. We're in the simple leg position. I need to work myself back because now I'm kind of only on Reese's calf. If I really wanted to, I might be able to like that, but probably not. So I need to work myself back to his, to his Achilles, because it's an Achilles lock, really. Now, but I don't want to go too far back. So what we're going to do, we're going to lean on our humerus and our elbow and our shoulder, and then we're going to seesaw our way back, okay? You see? You can already feel that. And what I'm doing also here, I'm kind of collecting a bit of his calf, I suppose, with like Achilles tendon, as I come back through, yes. You see? And so from here, I'm at the perfect point. I'm at his Achilles, I'm not too far back. You can feel it here rather than on your foot and your toes, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, perfect. So from there, all I'm gonna to look to do is keep this real tight and push it into him. Sorry. And rather than having it flat here, I'm keeping it bent in. I'm gonna look behind me and just hip it, okay? And you see how much movement you've got there. And now the key to finishing this, in my opinion, is looking behind you because your, kind of your chest and your body follows as you look behind and then all you've got to do is kick into that to finish that, okay? So we're here, start off nice and high you like, because you might end up in a shit position when you get a leg lock so you've got to get used to being able to work yourself down you might take two or three attempts to get it to that perfect spot that I did and then from there I'm going to kind of almost go belly down I just turn my chest down a little bit I'm going to raise, I'm going to raise my arm up as if I'm doing like a high elbow, high elbow guillotine, like my cello team, look behind me and hip in, okay? Do we have any questions? I'll go through it again, but we good? Sam, right, is this leg like stopping me from reaching to like try and grab that arm, stop you from extending away from me? Uh, I mean, yeah, I guess to an extent, I guess I am, like, there's all, in an ankle lock, you're always going to get Someone's always going to grab onto your arms. Everything's situational in jiu-jitsu, so you can defend everything if you know how to do it. Mm -hmm. But I think this foot is the one that's keeping you away. Because if you sit up into me now, yeah. you see, that's the foot yeah. that causes the problem. Doing stuff as well. I feel, I think it's more, for me, it's more just pinching. Mm. And I can push away a little bit, but I think it's a top one. So if I keep that one there, and you still try and sit up, yeah. I, still, I can still stop you. So, Find the calf, I'm going to work our way back 
as we work down it, make sure you're not being really light and gentle with it. You've got to put a bit into it. Like I'm trying to almost collect a bit of his calf as I go further down. So it moves the muscle and the kind of like the fascia. So one, two, and probably three. Okay? I'm going to return that way. I'm going to look behind me as if I'm looking over the shoulder that's on the floor and pull up like a Marseille team. Do you want to see it on anyone else? Yes, please. Anyone want me to do it on them? Go on, dude. Um, Come on, dude. So, nice and tight. Foot's in the hip, pushing in. Now, nah, very high with GGF legal because it's just a normal short ankle lock. So, keep that push, pushing him away. I'm going to seesaw one, two, I'm probably the third one from here. I'm going to look that way, I'm going to hip in and look behind me. Simple as that. What shall I do? YouTube, what shall I do? Uh, the most likes, I'll do it. Yeah. In case I get into a job with children, you get me like. Go, 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 do, do it down. Freeze frame it. Here. So I'm here, I'm going like this. So I'm, see how I'm taking that away? <laughs> right, so we're getting to the same position. Again, we're not going too far back. Because if I go too far back on it, and then I go for the belly down, so if you just push my foot off and I'll go for the belly down, then Breeze can just turn his foot out of that now. Which way? Just this way. It's kind of like, yeah, you did to me actually, so I can't tell you what you can see. So if you get really, really far down on it like that, the ankle lock is tight, it's horrible. But if I, if, as he goes for it and goes belly down, I can slip my heel out and escape the belly down foot lock quite easily. That's the reason why I don't like going too far back on the ankle. Even though it might put a lot of pressure on the foot and you might get attacked with it, but if someone knows how to defend it, they'll defend it quite easily. So, I'm going to go for the lay-down foot lock now. Nice and easy. You get to the same point, Reese is going to base, take the foot off. You shoot your leg through. Now I'm basing onto my arm, my shoulder and my head. I'm going to take my foot over. I'm going to put it in the hip. I'm going, to take, I'm going to let go of my hand. I'm going to put it on the floor and I'm just going to do a press up and hip into it, okay? So without him, you can, you can extend your body quite a lot there and push off, push off on the hip. Keep, make sure you've got that foot on the hip though because if you manage to lose it and he sits up into you, it's going to be a lot harder to finish now because he's a lot closer to me. So, Walk your way back down just as you were. He pushes off, you shoot that leg under, you come over the top, step on his hip, sprawl out, put your hand on the floor, press up and hip in, okay? So you're really extending your body like that. And then taking your arm with it. I kind of, I make a fist and just keep it tight to like, almost like the top of my abs, the bottom of my sternum. Keep it nice and tight there as you go. So one more time guys. So, you're working your way down, you're going nice and tight. Reese defends. I shoot, I let him push that leg off. I shoot it right under. I stomp onto his hip to push him away. Knee on the floor, hips down. I could get it like this, but you see. Sorry, water off. Ah, uh, yeah. You could get, but it's actually a lot easier if I just got this. Because you don't have to put as much energy into it. Any questions? Well, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yours. This is Natalie, this is my participation seminar. So my name is Shane Curtis, this is my And this is my set. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we need to look to get to this position here, okay? 
So, first things first, you need to get your shin to his shin, hence shin to shin. And then I'm looking to curl round here. And what I like to do is, just scoot round a little bit here, for anyone who has seen this position before, I keep my head real tight and keep my hand onto the knee. Because now, it's a lot harder for him to get under my neck, it's a lot harder for him to make space, and it's just a hell of a lot harder for him to defend his position, okay? Now, from here, I'm going to put my hand on the inside of his knee, I'm going to push away, and as I do, I'm going to roll to my side and kick my legs through to the single leg X position, okay? So from here, Reese will do one of two things. He'll continue going that way, I don't know why he would, because I would just heel hook him from there, but, or he'll stand up. And as he stands up, I'm going to sweep him down, okay? So we'll start with that. So, we're going shin to shin. The knee has to be on the outside. I don't want it too in line here, because then you can easily get his knee on the outside, pass my guard, and it's just hell from there. So, we're keeping this nice and tight. I'm keeping my cheek to his knee. Makes it a lot harder. And even if he goes to roll for a Kimura or something from here, because of how tight I am, if he goes for it, I'm still on his legs somehow. So like, it may not be pretty, but he can't do it. So we're going shin to shin, nice and tight. I've got my heel to my bum. <coughs> I've got my arm on the inside. I'm then catching my own knee, just to make this nice and tight. Because even then, if you try to circle around this way, I can still sweep him and come up because I'm that tight to him. If I'm kind of like this, and he circles around, like, I'm, it's just awkward and I'm not tight enough to do anything of any use. So I'm going to go dead tight to him, I'm going to put my hand on my opposite leg, I'm going to push on his knee because then that makes him step out, and then I'm going to kind of like roll underneath him, kick my leg up, end up in this position, and then as he stands, I'm going to turn, pinch my knees together and turn them out. And then we end up in the exact same position we were just working. So we do that one more time. So I'm going to go shin to shin here, nice and tight. I've got my cheek on the inside of his thigh, just above his knee. I'm controlling my own knee. I'm going to push his knee from the inside, roll off to the side. And then as his leg shoots on the outside, my leg shoots. So as his leg goes on the inside, my leg then goes on the outside. And then I can take him down from there. So anyone want to see that one again? Yeah. Also, do you want to see it on some of these? So I need you again, dude. So moving in, going shin to shin, nice and tight. I'm grabbing my knee. I've got my cheek. On, here, on the inside of his thigh, I'm going to push on the inside, I'm going to roll under him, and then you see, my shin stays nice and tight to his shin, and then as I flip my foot up, I can get straight to the single leg position. So now, he will either be already stood up, and then you can still go for, the, go for the sweep, but if you can't, and he's too strong, then we'll kind of move on to that afterwards, but it's quite easy to make him do that, and then he stands back up again anyway and go for the sweep. But if you hit the entry real quick, he will fall onto his hands. One more time, please. So, shin to shin. Got my knee nice and, kind of, nice and wide so I can fit my arm between it. I'm going to hand on my own knee, on my own thigh, push off to the side, kick this through, and then hip up, knees out to the side. I'll come around anyway, guys, so let's get that one a go. So, we're 
pressure is on my hips, so I can hit bump him. I'm going to push him forward so his weight is onto his hands. I'm going to then, I'm going to hip bump him, and I'm going to choose a side, my left or right. And I'm going to hip bump him off to the side, bring my knees on the inside there, okay? So I'll get that slower, so you can all see what I'm doing. So what I'm doing here is, I am lifting my hips to push him down, so his weight is more in his hands than it is in his hips and his knees and whatnot. I'm going to bridge, and as I bridge, I kind of catch him. And you see I push him off to the side, and he's basically with his knee. I'm going to swing my knee on the inside, and I end up in the exact same position. And this position, to be fair, <coughs> actually better to go for a heel hook than it is a split ankle lock, which we will cover uh, before I go. So one more time. Hands on the hips. Now don't get your hands like that, because you might break your wrists. I'm going like, kind of quite shallow. So you still, you're only kind of using the kind of like top of your wrist when you put the bit of palm strokes on one with. Heel again. The heel of your hand, we'll go for that. Bridge, take all his weight off of him. I'm gonna bridge, and then like, I can't like catch him on my hands. I'm not, I'm not going and pushing him. I'm like bridging and catching him. So it takes all of the effort out of that position. And even if he tries to stay there, it's kind of, it's still quite hard, especially like if you're upright, you can go upright and then I got this. And I go straight to it from there. It's quite hard to hold that position. So, one more time. I'm gonna bridge, knee him forward, catch him. I'm gonna bridge into him, catch him on my arms, move him off to the side. So, I need to know which side I'm going. I'm not just going up, I'm gonna go off to the side. And for me, it's generally this side. Then I bring the knee on the inside, Kind of like spin a little bit, and back, and up here. Now, there's many things Reese can do, but he's going to stand up. And then I'm going to take him back down again, just as we were doing. So, let's do that one more time. Do you want to see it? Yeah, come on. Ooh. So, he's pushing up. I'm going to bridge, take him to his hands. Hands to the hips, then I'm going to bridge, catch him off to the side. Bring my knee on the inside and my foot on the outside, as I were. And this, yeah, like I say, it's better to catch the heel position from here, which we will cover at the end. So one more time, bridge, knee, catch, hip bump, spin through. I'll come around anyway, guys. Do you have any questions? Sam, off we go then. back into it nice and easy. So, clinch. You've got that single. You flip his leg on the outside, keep that nice and high, kind of maybe even walk into him, make him hop a little bit, and then as soon as you sit back down, you sit straight into the single leg position, okay? So I want you to kind of like play with controlling the head to break the posture, and kind of hopping back and forth before you get into it. Do you want to see it? 
you've got the single, you stuck his leg on the outside. <coughs> if I keep this wheel high like this as well, it actually makes it easier because he can't pull his leg away. Hop into him, sit back, straight to the single leg X from there. One more time, and this time I'll control the head. So I'm here, I'm going to pull his head down a little bit, as if I'm going to get the take down. And then I just sit back and straight up into it, okay? This one should be quite easy. Um, so if you've got one to go, I'll come around guys, thank you. And then I'm looking to catch his heel on my wrist. I can either go gable grip or I can kind of go like a butterfly grip, okay? Just for argument's sake, we're going to gable for now. Okay? Now as I go to as I go to finish this, I'm looking to hit into his leg and kind of like arm bar his leg. And I'm putting the finish from there. But what a lot of people do is they'll twist. Rather than and, and just twisting like this, you'll eventually get it. Um, but it's not you're not going to get as quick and as powerful as you would do if you just if you hit into his knee. You see already <laughs> hitting into the knee and just arm barring his leg essentially. So what I'm looking to do is I'm looking to arch my back as if I'm as if I'm extending an arm in an arm bar, okay? And I keep this nice and tight. I rotate ever so slightly, hip in, and we go from there, okay? So that, that's pretty, pretty simple as far as heel hooks go. But what you will find is, as I go for this, Reese is going to roll. And as he rolls, I'm going to take this foot, I'm going to slide it all the way across. I'm going to keep this locked, and then I'm going to roll back. I'm going to end up in the same position, only tighter. You see what I mean? So you know, it's the same heel hook, it's just a bit of a roll through with it, okay? So do that again for you, because you find you might not get the person with this one straight away. So another little detail as well, I like to sometimes go behind the back of the knee because then I can expose the heel and see how I can turn his knee a little bit. And it's quite a lot hard, it's quite hard for him to now turn back into that. You see? Just with my fingers. And then I'm looking to wrap underneath, I'm going to the wrist. I'm not going, I'm not going to like my elbow, because now for you he can turn that and slip that quite easily because it's a bit more meaty there than it is like from where your watch would be. <coughs> I'm going to turn that in, hook that under, get my gable grip, then I can finish it there. Or if he rolls, I'm going to pass his top leg across, roll through, head down, and bang. We've got the finish right, right there, okay? So you want to see that, dude? So, we're in the same position. Might be even control his ankle a little bit. I'm put my hand behind the meat of his knee, almost kind of like where the tendons are. I'm going to turn it. I'm going to lift up to expose the heel, wrap it so it's on top of my wrist. Connect my hands. Then I'm going to hit into him and arm bar him to finish it. Or if he rolls, I'm taking his top leg over. He keeps rolling. Boom. The brakes right there. Uh, because it's a lot deeper already, and you see how the angle of his knees is kind of like decreased. At the, at the beginning, it was a little bit straighter, but now it's more bent here. There's a lot more pressure in that knee. 
Because what you'll find is if the leg's straight, the heel hook's not on that much because it's more about the rotation in the hip as opposed to the pressure in the knee. And if it's bent, you can't really, you can't really take away from the pressure of the heel hook by using mobile hips, shall we say. But then it goes straight to the knee. So you're almost on. So I'm going to go to like the, on the inside of the knee. I'm going to expose the heel, lift up, catch it on my wrist, click the gable grip. I'm going to hip into him just to finish the heel up there. And then if he rolls, I'm going to pass the top leg across. And then bang, I'm straight there. Because if you don't pass the top leg across, I'll show you what happens. So, I'm here, if I just keep rolling, without passing the top end across, you kind of lose it as you go. So in order to keep that bike tight, you've got to pass it across, so you'll end in that tighter position when you finish. So be real careful with this one guys, uh, that's one there, here we go.